what he's doing right now is like, it's almost, it's historic in my eyes. And I mean, I just kind of, I marvel at it all the time. The leadership he has on the field, off the field, the way he is with his family, the way he is with his kids, the way he is with his friends. You wear number nine to honor your sibling. Let's go back to the beginning. One of one of ten yeah. children. Yeah. How did that uh, help make the man that sits here today? Uh, well, first of all, it's Myra, Michael, Monica, Marquita, Marcus, Matthew, Bobby, Brandon, Brian, and Bryce. And uh, so those are my ten siblings. And uh, they, you know, aggravated me. Uh, told jokes about me, uh, helped me with my homework, fed me, picked me up, uh, make sure I was looking good. Uh, I remember, I remember, you know how you used to write notes to girls back in the day. I remember Keita was like my spell check. I was writing up like my first little note. Uh, Marquita was with my spell check. And um, you, uh, they created and helped build the person I am today. I like how the first thing you did was name them. You said all their names. Why was it important to you to say their names? Uh, cause, cause they rap my name so hard, right? Uh, I'm the one that kind of made it, and I'm in the limelight, and uh, everybody be like, "Oh, well, you just got Tim Sibley." Uh, every one of them had their own story. Uh, every, you know, uh, five of them was here before I was. Uh, they took care of me. Uh, they made sure I stayed out of trouble. They made sure I did so much. And then uh, the younger ones, I just did for them what my older siblings did for me. I remember uh, being like eight, nine, changing diapers or like getting a bottle ready or just watching uh, watching my siblings or, I, or just taking them to the basketball court or going outside and playing in the snow. And so, uh, just, they have a name, they just not my siblings. How does uh, growing up with so many siblings and, and either being provided for or providing for your younger siblings, how does that transfer into the teammate that you are and the brother that you are to your teammates? Uh, honestly, I think it helps because I, w I wasn't the only sibling, right? So it, w it wasn't never, it's me, me, me. I'm going here alone, I'm going here. And then you deal with so many uh, personalities, yeah. right? So you deal with so many personalities, and then you also understand that you can't change some people. Like, regardless if you if you know you're right, and it's sometimes you be like, I I got proof, I, and then they just still be like, nope. And so uh, you understand you can't change people, and then you be like, all right, well, we can agree to disagree but I still can love you. Um, when, you when you come into this league, you try to figure out what, what's your role, and he, you know, he just built himself up from his rookie year to now, and um, everything's gonna be a competition from the fan bite to the weight room to out there on the field, but it's always trying to see who, who could one up, but improve each other. So how'd you go from fifth round pick from Grand Valley State to three-time Pro Bowler? Uh, a lot of people miss, right? Uh, I, I want to say what I did in the NFL was something I could do where I got drafted, where I went to college. Uh, I, I had no control over that. And so uh, I took the opportunity I was given, and I'm, I'm appreciative for the Ravens for picking me whenever they did. You know, I was just happy to, at that, at that moment, I was just happy to be here. Uh, but then when I got there, I had great veterans. Uh, you know, I had Terrell Suds. Uh, I, I was last year with uh, Steve Smith. Um, you know, uh, Carl was there, LG was there. And, uh, you know, uh, they just made it feel like home. They just made it feel like home. I got to play with Eric Weddle, uh, Tony Jefferson, and then it being like some people that play and made a lot of plays in this league, right? And so when I got there, I just soaked it all in, took it what it was for, and and I just 
crafted it and started. It was like, all right, this is who I have to be. This is the weight I need to come in at, at training camp. Uh, this is what I got to eat. And this is what I got to do. And then I just start building from there. It wasn't like I came in and I was that guy right away. Mm -hmm. uh, it took time. Uh, it took a lot of craft in my skill. It took a lot of uh, patience. Uh, and uh, it took everything I had and I have put into to get here. Uh, and right now, I'm enjoying the success, but I, I don't want this to be like uh, the peak. I never really seen him in a, in a bad mood. You know, he always wants to bring up other people up um, when he's by them. And that's the best thing about him. And that brings that leadership, yeah. you know, on and off the field. And you can see it on, on Sunday, that leadership he brought on the field, the celebration he does with, with, with uh, his teammates and, and the enthusiasm he has with the fans. Out there on the field, he's having fun. And you know, like to see a guy make it look that easy and have that much fun, it's just contagious. And you know, his smile, his laughter, like everything is just like, it's the energy in the room, so. Yeah. You look like somebody that really enjoys your job. Like you enjoy coming to work. Where does that come from? From having nothing. <laughs> from having nothing, like, uh, It'd be like the small, like Gatorade is free here, <laughs> right? Like Gatorade, like a two dollar drink is free here, right? Pedialyte, you go to the store, five dollars. You got Pedialyte stacked, and tell you and like, and then like if I'm in a if I'm in a locker room, I'll be like, hey, can you go get me a Pedialyte? And then somebody somebody older than me will bring it to me, right? And uh, coming from nothing and having nothing, and you appreciate those things, and it, I'm not like over overdoing or overzealous with it or don't uh thank everybody that helped me get here uh but just like that little thing right just having a free drink or somebody can get it for you or just look out for a, a little a little second just that like it's like why not work while you're here why not sacrifice why not put all the time and all your effort in to just this you know sometimes it's three sometimes it's five ten year window that i have right now and so i'm going into my seventh year and like you know i'm closer to the end and the beginning and so i come in here with a smile on my face because when this is over it's over it's nothing else like the nfl uh, I don't then in the NFL and be like, all right, well, I'm about to go to the NBA or or I can restart or I can get another career. It's nothing after this. It's life after this. It's, li it's life after this, but it's no job like this. It's, no, it's nothing I can go out there and I can toss the, fan, uh, toss the ball with the fans and, and make their day. So you really do approach life and the game, you live each day like it's your last and play each play like it's your last. Mm -hmm. uh, I can honestly say I enjoy every minute of football. I enjoy the naps I get in meetings. I enjoy working the naps out. naps you get in meetings? I mean, like, <laughs> you know, the watching film, like, you just like, uh, what is, you know, but like, I can I, I enjoyed it all. I can enjoy the table talk, the locker room talk, the banter back and forth, the pushing and shoving, the the fine calls that I'm thinking like, why would I get fined for this? Why would I get fined for my socks? But I can enjoy that because I was a part of that, and when I was going through that, I made the most of I made the most of it, and I was I was thankful and. I res hopefully I respected everybody I came in contact with. So despite the Pro Bowls, despite the contract, just like you still at that fifth round pick from Grand Valley State. You still have that chip on your shoulder? Yeah. Uh, see, I don't, I think a lot of people like you, you got that chip. Like, no, I just love playing football. Like, I, it's nothing else like this. It's not, like, even if I was a good hooper, which I'm, like, I'm not. I'm not a, like, I didn't, I'm not even a good wreck hooper, but. <laughs> Uh, if I was a good hooper, I don't think basketball would be like football, man. Like, 
Like, you don't get no sack or you can't, like, you can't hit nobody. You know, yeah, I mean, you can dunk on somebody or shoot on them, but, like, like, you don't get to, like, solve it during the play. You don't get to solve it during the play. And we can solve it through a play. Like, the best man on this play is going to win. And uh, that's what it is week in, week after. And so, like, everybody, you got chip. I don't got no chip on my shoulder. Like, nobody did nothing to me. Nobody, like, insulted my family. It's just a lot of people miss. Like, that, it happened all the time. It's yeah. players from D2 that's good that never get the look. Nobody did nothing to me. Like, a lot of people actually gave me opportunities to to get where I am. And so I'm more appreciative, like, mm. chip on my shoulder, like, like, nah. That's got a negative connotation to it. Yeah, like it's, it's like it's like people be out to get you. Like people wasn't out to get me. Like I still got a scholarship. I still was able to play after high school, and I was able to further my education. And then now I'm in the NFL from it. And so like, yeah, I didn't go to Michigan. I didn't go to Michigan State. Uh, I actually sent my. Uh, my stuff to LSU and Oregon at the time. Oregon was popping at the time. I was like, I was like, I, I'm a for sure be a duck. But I, I mean, they just they just missed. Like they or they didn't even miss. They they had successful season. They cool with the players that they had. Like they just didn't have me. Mm -hmm. And Grand Valley took the chance and they 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 got me there. And so it ain't it ain't a chip. Like it's players that come from everywhere. It's not only Alabama out here or the or SEC or Michigan or Big Ten, Ohio State. It's not only those players on our team. So so somebody got to have an origin, a origin story, and mm -hmm. that's what mine is. That origin, let's go back to that. You, you said a couple of times you came from nothing. Uh, you mentioned it being forward to a room at times. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about your upbringing and, and, and how difficult it was? When you say come from nothing, what do you mean exactly? My mom just did with whatever she could to put us in the opportunities to have a better lifestyle. Uh, but that also came with a lot of sacrifices. And I'm not going to sit up here and lie to like, we, we didn't have running water. Like, she did everything she could. Her and uh, my dad, Earl. They did everything they could to help us and to uh, get us in better school districts and uh, keep the lights on and keep us fed. Uh, but it was tough at some times. Like, it, it, sometimes we didn't get the best stuff. Like, sometimes we couldn't have the, like, fancy stuff. Or, and then, like, me, I'm not knowing, but like, I'm like, dang, like, mom, why you have all these kids? Like, we pulling up in vans and stuff and, like, we got to sit on laps and stuff. So, like, like yeah, we didn't have a lot, but, like, it was always love there. And so, like. Rich in love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is, so, nothing nothing is a, like, term of, like, having, right? But, like, we always had each other. We all always had, like, love and stuff. So, like, we just didn't have the best, like, stuff that I probably wouldn't even have to this day. And so like cars and clothes and stuff that really didn't even matter. That now that you look at it and you actually think about it like so like I kinda gotta stop saying I ain't have, right? Because I had a mom, I had a dad, I had all my siblings, uh thank God like nobody is like messed up or nobody fell into addiction or drugs or like we all, not all of us, but we all had kids. Like everybody above me had kids. My four younger brothers don't, but we was all able to uh, live our lives and and uh, just kind of leave our mom and just grow and flourish. And so like we had, we had so much. So like now I just think about it and saying it, like we had so much yeah. and like the Lord just continues to bless our family. He seems to enjoy his job, every part of it, even interactions with the media. The media here in New England love working with him, 
What's he like in the locker room when the cameras aren't on? The same thing that you see in the media, it's the same way. Um, plays music, understands what everybody likes. But the best thing about it is he, he can cheer people up that, that's a little bit down, you know, talking to them. Um, like I said, high, high enthusiasm, always wants to have a smile on his face, always cracking the joke, one of the funnier guys in the locker room. Yeah. But the best thing about it is he's not trying to hurt nobody's feelings, he's not trying to drag nobody to the ground, he's trying to always uplift them. I was going to ask you where your joy and your enthusiasm comes from. It sounds like it comes from a place of of appreciation and gratitude. Knowing that like nothing on this earth uh, really has meaning or nothing on this earth I can take with me. So everything I have or everything I'm given, the clothes on my back or the clothes I get buried in, right? I, I don't have for eternity. Mm -hmm. So right now, like, live it up. Like, live it <laughs> right. up. Like, right. do what you can to make you happy. Do what you can to serve others. Do what you can to appreciate what you have right now. But this stuff, it perishes. Did you always have this wisdom about you? You have such, such perspective. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? No. <laughs> the wis wisdom, no way. Uh... You know, I always been like uh, secretly smart. Like I ain't, I ain't never been a 4.0 student or nothing. I ain't about to lie to nobody. Uh, but I always been like street smart and uh, just not fast to go do everything. Like it'll come when it's my time. It'll come, and I think that just happened from uh, having a big family. It it'll come. It'll come. It, it'll be there. It, uh, you know, how the gospel son, it might not come when you want it, but it'd be there right on time. And that's what always has happened. Like somehow I got cleats every year for football. Somehow I got basketball shoes. Somehow I made it to every game. I made it to every practice. I traveled somehow, somehow. And then so that's, just kind of how I be living. Like, like somehow it's going to pan out. Somehow it's going to work out. Like, somehow I'm going to get it. And then, but with that, like, you got to go work for that. What is your why? Uh, I think everybody why's change as we go along. As you have success or as you have failure, your why change. Uh, but I think uh, my why's have always been something close to me. Uh, like my family, uh, my kids, uh, just proving it to myself, becoming better. Can I do this? Can I be uh, one year, uh, one year I lost to Darius Smith and Terrell Sud. Well, can I be the best pass rusher? Okay, uh, I come to the Patriots. Uh, I get paid. I get paid a big contract. Uh, where will I live up to that? Or are they just throwing money at something that don't won't work? And so uh, my why changed, man. But the reason why I love this game is just because, like I said, it's nothing else like it. It's nothing else like it. And that's just pure joy from seeing some of my favorite players, like LaDainian Thomas, uh, Lawrence Taylor, um, Jason Taylor, uh, Warren Moon. Like, just so many guys, like, yeah. just play the game and just see them enjoy it, see them loving it. And now I'm somebody's favorite player. Somebody looking up to me. Somebody like, one day I will be that. And so that's, that's why this game is like nothing else. This season you're having, you going for defensive player of the year? Nah, nah. But uh, honestly, I was at uh, I was at the award ceremony in the back last year when uh, TJ received it, and uh, I, I love that honor. I love that honor. Uh, but I'm going to play for my team for real. But uh, within the scheme. Uh, within the organization, and uh, if defensive player of the year happen, or if it don't happen, I enjoy the season just like it did or didn't.
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.